So we asked them, um, we asked three questions in that first uh, day of class. We asked if we have a system of linear equations, do solutions exist? If a solution does exist, how many? Remember that our options here are that there can be one solution or infinitely many solutions. And finally, what are they? How do we find them? And we answer the third question first. We can find solutions using Gauss-Jordan elimination. And the sort of disappointing answers to the first two questions is that to know whether solutions exist or to know how many solutions there are, we have to row reduce. So essentially, to answer those questions, we do the work that we need to do to find the solutions. And then we look at what we get. Then we say, well, did we get anything? And if we did, did we get one solution or infinitely many solutions? Um, we'll approach this question, though, in a slightly theoretical way. We'll present some definitions, and then we'll present some theorems. So definition, pivot, position. The pivot positions of a matrix are where the leading entries will be after Gaussian elimination. So not the leading entries of the matrix, but where the leading entries will be. So let's go back to this example. Here's the matrix we started with. And then we perform Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination, and there's the matrix we end up with. And remember that a leading position is the first non-zero position of a row. So there's a leading entry, there's a leading entry, there's a leading entry. Now, those are not the leading entries of the original matrix. The leading entries of the original matrix were the ones I just boxed, just the first entry of every row. But this is where a leading entry will be, and that is where a leading entry 
entry will be. And that is where a leading entry will be. And those are the pivot positions. Let's see, and then a closely related definition. Pivot columns. A pivot column is a column that has a pivot position in So going back here again, this column is a pivot column. It has a pivot position in it. This column is a pivot column. It has a pivot position in it. This column is a pivot position. It has a pivot position in it. The last column is not a pivot column. It does not have a pivot position in it. And that tells us something. Theorem. A system has at least one solution if and only if the last column is not a pivot column. Um, and this theorem, then, is just a very fancy way of saying that once we perform row reduction and have this thing in row echelon form or reduced row echelon form, we see if there are any columns that are zero everywhere, except for the last column, which is not zero. And a row like this means that there are no solutions. And again, going back to our to our new of a cab theory, um, remember that once we have this matrix in reduced row echelon form, the pivot positions are the first non-zero entries. So this is what. this theorem means if the last column is a pivot column then everything is zero except for the last entry which is not zero and the reason this theorem works i mean suppose we have 
a matrix in reduced row echelon four. Um, and maybe it looks like this, for example. According to the theorem on the previous frame, there aren't any solutions. And the reason there aren't any solutions is that second row. The third row's five. Um, the first three entries are zero, but the last entry is also zero. No problem with the third row. But we have an entry, we have a row that looks like that, where everything is zero except the last entry. And this says that there are no solutions. And why does it mean there are no solutions? Well, because that second row is saying that 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 3. Well, 0x and 0y and 0z, though, are all 0. So that second row is telling us 0 equals 3. This obviously is not true, and it means that there are no solutions. Some more definitions. Say you have a system of linear equations. So you have variables. Every variable is called either basic or free. We can classify all of the variables into either one or the other of these buckets, these categories. And the way this works, suppose you, ha you have a system. So the system has an augmented matrix that corresponds to it and say that we put that augmented matrix into echelon four. And again, I feel like I was slightly rambling earlier, but when I need to put a matrix into echelon form, I normally go ahead and put it into reduced row echelon form. That was all I was getting at way back here. I was trying to emphasize, well, this last phase is quick. So if you're putting it into row echelon form, you might as well put it into reduced row echelon form. So say that we do that and we wind up with with this. So our system of linear equations only had two equations in it. As far as variables, x1, x2, x3, x4, and the last column does not correspond to a variable, it corresponds to a quality. 
So we're probably used to seeing matrices or to seeing systems, I should say, where there are as many equations as there are variables, but there's no rule that that has to happen. It's perfectly fine. We have two equations. We have four variables. That's great. Let's find the pivot position. Well, to find the pivot position, you need to put the matrix into row echelon form, but we've already done that. And once the matrix is in row echelon form, the pivot positions are the first non-zero entries. So they're the ones I just circled. And from the pivot positions, we can get the pivot columns. Now, notice that aside from the last column, which corresponds to equality, Columns correspond to variables. So the pivot columns that I just circled correspond to variables. They correspond to x1 and x3. A variable is called basic. If it's corresponding column is a pivot column. So in this example, X1 and X3 are basic because they're corresponding columns, this column here and this column here, have pivot positions in them. Otherwise, a variable is called free. If the corresponding column is not a pivot column, the variable is free. So in this case, x1, sorry, x2, and x4. Theorem. If a system has any solutions at all, it has one solution if all the variables are basic, it has infinitely many solutions. if there are any free variables.
So did not mean to do that. Here, the system of linear equations that has this as its augmented matrix has an infinite number of solutions. Um, we know that it has at least one solution via this theorem. We look for rows that look like this, and there aren't any. So there's at least one solution. And then the fact that there are free variables that x2 and x4 are free tells us there are infinitely many solutions. And, and this frame's a little crowded, but I mean, we can see what happens if we try to write solutions down. X1 equals five, but that second equation is just telling us that X3 plus X4 equals two. And there are an infinite number of solutions because there are an infinite number of ways we could satisfy those requirements. Like five, zero, one, one is a solution. Five, three, two, zero is a solution. There are an infinite number of solutions. 